what we need to do based on it, that ask then is to write a letter to the board and Tom Albanese formalizing that request. Carla, we met um, after the meeting with Tom Albanese and Carla had it written out on a sheet of paper and he said, well, you signed this and he said, yeah. So, you know, we just, we just have to do that. Some of the things that um, I, I really, um, it was good to go back. I had been there uh, four years ago. And I think uh, myself, Susan Lafiniere, um, Fran Whitman, and Gabe went. And, uh, you know, that was our first exposure to the London Mining Network. Um, what Richard Solly does and his, his, his group is they really work hard to get people coming in from all around the world. And every year he picks kind of a different focus or even the same people coming just to get that pressure, continue the pressure at the AGM. He also sets up meetings with, for example, we had a meeting with the Church of England, um, talking their ethical advisor of financial in investment, you know, which is a dichotomy all of itself. But um, so we talked to an individual with the Church of England and with the Methodist Church who invests in Rio Tinto. And so they had a lot of questions and we met mostly, it was Carla and I, and Zana from Mongolia. Um, Zana is um, very interested in the Ayum Tolgoi mine, which is an adjunct to the Ivanhoe mine. I don't know if folks have been following what's going on, but it's in the Gobi Desert. And Zana is the, she's 62 years old, and she's very cosmopolitan. She's dressed to the T's, she's um, very articulate. And she let him have it um, at this meeting. It was really, really very much a pleasure to watch her. But she also was very clear when she was meeting with the Church of England. We met with an MP, a uh, military, uh, yeah, military. <laughs> sure. a um, member of parliament, excuse me. Um, we were a part of a Greenwash 2012, which was an attempt to kind of take back the whole notion that Rio Tinto was supplying all of the metals for the, for the games and that uh, BP is their sustainable partner for the games, which is, you know, just pretty incredible. Um, we also met with um, um, a feminist blog magazine, um, it's called The F Word. And she wanted to meet with all of the um, female persons there in a nice chat. So after the G, uh, AGM, I pretty much gave up my time to, to Carla, and she did the ask. And then after the meeting, went up to Tom and Albanese and hey, asked him to come down. And he was buttoning up his shirt and had the microphone on. So he came down. And, and so we approached him. Hi, you guys. We approached him on several fronts. Um, we were talking about the the air filter. We were talking about all of the money that we were they were spending on other things like Rio Tinto blazing across the dogs and the dog sled race. Um, the university folks being brought on for for air monitoring and really really pushed to him that he needed to be getting real science done up there. Um, he did make a comment that. Um, and I handed him the EPA letter for 595. I handed him Flambeau Mine, uh, Laura Gogger's um, lawsuit. And I handed him a letter from Steve Iwinski, who now lives at Big Bay, who used to work for Green's Creek Mine, who used to work for uh, Kennecott. He was their environmental engineer. Right. And so just. At Flambeau? No. At Green's Creek. Yeah, he worked at Flambeau too. He well, he went to Flambeau there. as a contractor. There, but, um, yeah, so, so yeah, so he was very familiar with all of those things. The biggest thing that Steve Iwinski has finally done um, is he has sat face to face to Matt Johnson in a meeting with Powell Township and said, you know, you guys, what you're doing is wrong. I'm with these guys. I'm going to help these guys. We're going to work on getting uh, an air monitoring program out there. And Matt, when, Matt Johnson was not very happy. With, with him. He sat right next to him in the meeting. So we need to continue. Um, they talk in the AGM. They have people talking about New Guinea, Papua New Guinea, Indonesia.
Asia, Mongolia, um, the, the Pebble Mine, um, the NRDC was there with the Pebble Mine folks. Um, they got Tom Albanese to agree that while he's not against the mine per se, that he is not for them doing a um, surface mine, that it should be an underground mine. Um, but, but they were all there, and the Quebec steel workers were highly insulted um, and uh, probably did not go home happy campers because they, he pretty much dismissed them. He and uh, Jan de, de Plusis, the um, chairman of the board, pretty much dismissed them as irresponsible, not responsible, not uh, wanting to come to a table and deal responsibly with that, and they were, they were pretty irritated with that. Um, you know, I, I have to say again that every time when we go, I am amazed at, um, I'm sorry, but what a little fly speck this mine is to them, and what, um, of all the things that they are doing out there, um, a horrible, horrible things, um, what's happening in Mongolia. Um, they're concerned about their whole aquifer being snarfed up um, for this mining venture. Um, thousands and thousands of workers are being brought in from China. There's uh, wars, you know, kind of starting, little, little wars out there. Um, and so, um, you know, we just, it, it's good that we continue to go there, however. Utah moms are very much about the reduction of the air quality or the improvement of the air quality. 30% of the air quality in Utah is by Kennecott's mine, the Bingham Canyon mine, and 70% is vehicles. <laughs> well, that's all that they're, they're admitting into, and so Tom Albanese was very cavalier and just said, you deal with all the vehicles and tell all those boys to get into smaller trucks and not <laughs> in smaller vehicles and don't ride those big old, big ass trucks all around. And, uh, you know, and then we'll see what we can do. Huh? We got to quit burning wood. Yeah. <laughs> and we got to quit burning wood.